Hi, I'm Ted McDonald, a member of the OpenDXL development team. This is Getting Started with OpenDXL Part 2. In this video, we will deploy and configure the OpenDXL console to communicate with an existing DXL fabric managed by McAfee ePolicy Orchestrator. This is a continuation of the series from Part 1, where we configured an OpenDXL environment in a Docker container. First, we'll need to provision a new client configuration to communicate with our EPO managed fabric. In our OpenDXL environment, let's open a terminal and change to our mounted OpenDXL directory, which we'll use as our working directory. Let's try to run the DXL client module first using python -m DXL client. This shows us the different commands available from the command line. For now, we're only interested in provision config, so let's try to run that. We can see from the help display that we need the required parameters configdir, hostname, and common or CSR file name. We'll need the location of our EPO server to continue. So in our browser, we have an EPO server deployed at this address. Let's grab that and go back to the terminal. So to fill in our parameters, first we need to specify a directory. Uh, in this case, we use opendxl-console. Then we need to paste in our EPO location. And finally, we need a common name to associate with our certificate. So we'll use opendxl-console-cn. All right, so let's run that. And now it's prompting us for the admin credentials for our EPO server in order to sign and get our certificate and authorize it for access to our DXL fabric. We can see the files being generated in our directory, and now we're all set to deploy an OpenDXL console. In Kitematic, we can search the Docker registry for the OpenDXL-console image. Let's create a new container from that image. Now that our container is deployed, we need to configure it. In the volume section under settings, we can mount the directory where we provision the config to the slash opt slash DXL console dash config folder. When we select our folder, we can see the DXL certificate and configuration files that were generated on the command line. Now we can see in the home screen that the OpenDXL console has connected to a broker and is running successfully. Now let's configure which port we want the OpenDXL console to run on. In the hostname slash port section of settings, we can see the OpenDXL console is running on port 8443 in the container. Let's map that to port 8443 on our local machine as well. And save that. Now, we can navigate to port 8443 on our local machine to reach the OpenDXL console. The default credentials are admin and password. These can be changed in the console configuration after deployment. Now we are in our fully deployed OpenDXL console. With the OpenDXL console, we can perform most of the common operations used in a DXL fabric. In the lower left, we have the subscriptions pane. This allows us to subscribe to and receive events on any topic. We'll subscribe here to slash OpenDXL slash test slash event. In the upper right, we have the send message pane. This allows us to publish events or requests to a specified topic with a specified payload. Let's publish an event on our topic, slash OpenDXL slash test slash event. And let's give it a payload. How about hello world payload? And send message. We can see in the lower right, received messages pane, our message arrived. We can double click on this message to see the full details. This has been getting started with OpenDXL part two. In part three, we will deploy an OpenDXL integration, the OpenDXL MaxMind service, and request geolocation data through the OpenDXL console.